Today's video is a variegated wash to um, to create a sunset and so I will always mix up my paints for a large area of sky or any kind of flat wash or variegated wash in something like this, a palette with some deep pans or some little dishes that are separate because I need quite a volume of colour uh, mixed with water that I can't get if I try to mix it in the side areas of my, my palette. And it needs to be a clean colour and you can see I don't clean my palette. So I've mixed up already yellow ochre with a little touch of Indian yellow with the most volume of water out of any of these three mixes. My next mix is Rose Matter Genuine um, and then Cobalt Blue. So the Cobalt Blue has the highest volume of pigment in the mix. The other two are quite watery and light. Another um, thing you should always have when you're painting is just a little piece of paper for testing colour. And ideally it should be the same paper that you're using, but you know, whatever is a scrap that you've got on hand is great. Just to test these colours to know they're as dark or as light as I want them. Because with a, a variegated wash or a flat wash, you don't really have a second chance to build up the colour. So I'm actually deciding there I need the blue to be a little bit stronger. So I'm adding a little bit more just pigment into that colour mix there. Okay, and so my test colour is um, letting me know that's pretty good. They're ready to go. And I've just got my board up on a little bit of a lean because I need gravity to help me have these colours travel down further. Usually my glasses case is a pretty good, um, pretty good angle. So at the moment I've got um, just a little box tucked under there. The other thing to consider is brushes. So with a flat wash, particularly if it was a bigger piece of paper than this, I would always use a mop brush or this um, large Chinese painting brush that I have. And these are Squirrel and Sable, as opposed to a Taclon brush. Taclon, whether it's yellow or golden Taclon or the white Taclon, it doesn't hold as much moisture as Sable. So you set yourself up to fail straight away if you're trying to do a, a large wash area that you want to be smooth with a Taclon brush. So if you can, um, if you're after a cheaper brush than a Sable, Imitation Squirrel um, or Squirrel is cheaper and it will do the same. It will hold a good amount of water for you to get this wash on. So you must mix up all of the colours that you need for the wash before you start. The biggest mistake you can make is mix the yellow and then start painting. I need all of the colours ready to go so that I don't stop once I put paint to paper because I need to just keep going while the paint's wet. I've taped my paper down which you'll see from other tutorials I don't normally do. Um, for a flat wash it does just make it easier. Any runs down the side will happen on the um, on the masking tape instead of on the paper. So I'm starting with the yellow and the reason I've got the most amount of this is that I'm going to cover my page with the yellow first. So with a flat wash the only time you go back and forth is this first stroke to build up what we call the bead. So this run of moisture here and then after that every stroke we do we pick up more paint and water from our palette and we capture the bead. And you can see I've got the brush flat down, doing a big stroke with the least effort possible to get all the way to the bottom. But if I don't pick up paint every stroke and I think, oh, there looks like there's a lot, like here I'm just making sure I've got the bead happening there. I'll push a bit of that pigment back in off the sides. I could, if I can see the top drying a little bit, I could just travel it up. But it shouldn't be drying. This is more actually that my top is a bit paler than what I would like. So I'm just going to manipulate that a little bit. But the best thing you can do is practice doing these where you don't have to manipulate the colour at all. Sometimes you'll get little areas like this that repel and that can be that you've had something on your fingers when you've cut the paper. 
so now I'm picking up more and I'll make sure I've got this bead here with a second stroke. I'm down in the water area now of my painting. I'm doing this as a reflective sunset so that you can see the opposite happening in the water to what happens in the sky. But what I started to say before I got distracted then was if I saw that there looked like heaps of paint or water here and I just keep painting without picking up a new lot of paint each stroke, my paper will dry much quicker than what I want it to in order to do this full sunset scene. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of that moisture off the sides of the tape so that that yellow doesn't run back on. And now I pick up the pink and I start back at the top and I'm going to do less number of strokes and I use a much lighter pressure now because I've already got yellow on there that I don't want to disturb. So I'm just running the brush over and I want that to just travel down now gradually. If it's running at the edge, you can just pick that up really carefully with a paper towel. But in general, that doesn't bother me because I lose a little bit with framing. So I do want to just manipulate this a little bit so that it doesn't run too far because in my sunset scene, I want to have blue, then pink, then yellow showing. So I know this is going to continue to travel. My next step is to put the opposite at the bottom with the pink. So that allows me to turn it around and work from the bottom now. And the same thing, one or two strokes. I've actually got less space at the bottom. I put my horizon just off centre, a little bit lower than centre. So I feel like these two strokes will be all that I want. Maybe one more but I'll go half over the one before. And the reason I've gone a little bit higher there is because I know in a minute when I turn my paper back around, the paint will actually run downwards. So it, it can't travel up any further. So I'm cleaning the moisture off the sides. I've got a little strong bead there, so I'll just capture that and now I'll turn it back around. And so this is the reason now that I need the blue to be a little bit stronger and thicker pigment because I'm coming back up on top and I want to just do maybe two strokes of the cobalt blue and I want it to make a mauve. So I'm just going to stop it running too far by just manipulating the angle. I'm tilting, tilting my paper. I'm not worried about that green, that the pink that's running down there, but if you were, you just angle to the side a little bit. It's only because there's a depression, obviously, in the paper, a buckle that the, the masking the sides creates. So again, I'll just take that paint off the sides. I need to do the blue at the bottom. So again, it's a lighter pressure than when you put that first wash on because we're trying not to disturb the pink and the yellow. Oops, I've touched onto there, which is a little bit of a problem with my paper towel um, because it creates a dry spot. I'll just mingle that back in. And I might just angle this on the side just because that buckle is creating a little bit of a um, pooling of paint, which might just give me a cauliflower or a bloom as it's drying. So I want to get the majority of it off. Run that along there. But you can see now it's sort of hitting this drier section of the initial yellow. So I've just got to continue to manipulate the angle just a little bit one of the biggest mistakes you can make is come back in with a brush because you tend to disturb the paint too much
Oh, see, I've just noticed that around here, so I want to make sure I capture that. I'm trying just to even this little section out here a little bit. That's better now. I'm not worried about what's happening behind the mountain here, but that now is softer. So you can see we have this gorgeous transition now from our blue, which has turned mauve, into our pink, into our yellow, and the reverse in the bottom, yellow into pink, into blue. And our aim in doing this is to work quickly and efficiently so that the paper doesn't dry and leave streaks. If we want to create a moonrise in our twilight scene, um, a little, a small coin just wrapped in a tissue or paper towel. Tissue is preferable to paper towel, but I don't actually have one handy. The paper towel has a has a pattern. But I'll wrap the coin and then I'll think about position. I've got my boat here, so maybe I'll pop it over here and I'll just press. And what that's doing is lifting out the moisture um, in the in the paint, the moisture, sorry, in the paper. So it may travel a little bit back in. I do want it to soften a fraction, but I do later put a little bit of um, a little bit of color back in there like the moon would not be white as such like it is at the moment so that's called a variegated wash because I've used multiple colors sometimes you know it could also be a graduated wash because it's like I think of graduated as being lighter to darker in one color um, but this is giving a similar effect if I'm painting this myself my next goal is to actually get these mountains in while this is still damp so i'm going to stop the video and let it just set for a little minute and then i'll show you the mountain but this tutorial basically was about this variegated wash so i've done this variegated wash and it's still slightly damp my next step if i want really soft distant mountains is to actually learn to put them on while the paper is still damp so where you can see it's glossy like if you move your paper and i can see it's very very shiny here but it's almost lost the shine in this section so this is drier than what this is here so that tells me my paint always needs to be drier on the brush if i'm coming back to add something or adjust um, something on my painting my my paint must be drier so if i made a mauve and it was watery like these that i used in the initial wash everything would just run back away from where i put the color so i'm going back to my other normal palette and i'm mixing up in here quite a dry um just pale mix of mauve and i'll start where it's nearly dry so you can see there's not a lot of water in my brush there's nothing dripping out if i flicked I've picked up just a little bit of colour and I'm going to drop it in very carefully from the driest part across to the wettest. And you can see this is softening up. That's what I want to achieve so that I get distance and perspective in my paintings. I've had to pick up more paint so I'm careful not to wash my brush. But the reason that I like to do this while it's slightly damp is for the soft line that you get at the top but also for the color that will glow through it so i'll just put this and then i'll show you one i prepared earlier like a kitchen cooking show i started the wash without the tape on the sides on a different piece of paper and it um the pink just ran like crazy down the side so i thought i'm going to start again rather than persevere with that so I'll show you on the other one that's nearly dry. So this is uh, was my first um, attempt at the variegated wash. And you can see I had some pink run down the middle. I also had pink run down both sides because I didn't tape it anywhere bar at the top. Um, but here where you see that mountain now, you can see how it gets just a soft, hazy look to it. 
the yellows glowing through, the pinks glowing through the mauve in some areas. So for me, that's more successful to create distance. I may still sometimes come and put another wash over the top of it to strengthen it a little bit, but it just keeps that softer area. It bled down below my horizon, so I've got a lovely start of a suggestion of a reflection happening there. You can see here, it's just starting to bleed down. So I don't blow dry that. If I was in a rush, I would be more likely to have two paintings on the go than hit this with the blow dryer because you change um, you change the dryness of the paper in some areas before others and it just doesn't have time to do this kind of magic, um, which is what I love about watercolour. <laughs> 